Hi, good afternoon and welcome to Community Talk. I'm Matt Lohman, the Executive Director of Hope Outreach Ministries. With me today I have Sandy Hamilton, the uh, uh, Community Coordinator for uh, um, our Community Care Ministry. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's good to have you, Sandy. Thank you for coming with me today and, and uh, talking about the, our Community Care Ministry. And I just wanted to ask uh, some questions of you today and uh, help you convey some of the information that we'd love the public to know about our community care ministry as well as other things about Hope Outreach Ministries. Okay, great. Um, first thing I'd like to ask, and if you could share with the folks, is uh, what is the location of our community care ministry and also the hours of operation? Okay. Well, community, the community care ministry itself is located inside the day center for our homeless. Mm -hmm. um, that's where my desk is. And our hours of operation are Monday through Friday between the hours of 9 and 4. <clears throat> Okay. So. Hours of nine and four. To work. Yeah, to be able to work the community yeah. care ministry. Uh, the actual facility is open eight o'clock to four o'clock, right. but community care ministry nine o'clock to four o'clock. Nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, what are the services? We say community care ministry, and people say that sounds good. That sounds really nice. Community and care ministry, all of those sound good. But what what services do we provide? Well, you know, community care is actually a work in exchange program, and it allows people to come in and actually work for the things that they need. Some of those things that we offer are utility assistance, that's mm -hmm. our big one, and we will pay up to $100 mm -hmm. in exchange for 14 hours work um, to any individual who's able to physically do the job. And I mean, I've had 80-year-old women come in and, and sit back there and match up socks and price them for us mm -hmm. in exchange for that $100 mm -hmm. towards their bill. We also do your more mundane things like gasoline, mm -hmm. uh, milk, eggs, and bread, mm -hmm. laundry voucher, et cetera, duds. Mm -hmm. um, we, you can work for an Oklahoma ID voucher okay. in okay. case you lose your ID and need to replace it. That's mm -hmm. three hours for a $20 voucher. You can work for household necessities and clothing from our thrift store. Mm -hmm. That's great. And you know, you talk about the ID, and that's one of those things that it's awfully hard to get a job if you don't have an ID. That's right. And if they don't get that first step taken care of, sometimes it's it's very difficult to get moving forward. Right. So. And we encounter that a lot. People saying, oh, I need to get a job. Mm -hmm. I need an Oklahoma ID. Or my ID expired, mm -hmm. and they need a current ID. So we like to be able to help with that. Okay. Now, when, when we have people come in, um, you know, you kind of touched on this, that we had an elderly lady being able to just match socks. Are we asking people to do things that we wouldn't do ourselves? Absolutely not. In, in fact, we will tailor the job to the individual. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they do what we do. In the thrift store in and the In the thrift store and in the warehouse. And, mm -hmm. it, and I always say nothing's too hard. <laughs> it's just busy work. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you. What about... Um, folks come in sometimes and they have a need bigger than we can meet or it's a need that that we don't actually service provide that service what do we do with uh, folks who come in at that point well one of the things that I am so proud of in Enid is that our social service agencies network together very well mm -hmm. and so I can direct them to the agency that may be able to best help them. Mm -hmm. I can also advocate with them uh, maybe make a few phone calls um, maybe two agencies or more can get together and help. Mm -hmm. You know, we also have a new um, tool that United Way helped fund, and it's Charity Tracker. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to enter information in the Charity Tracker, which other agencies can view, mm -hmm. and we can explain the need and uh, ask for the help that, we're, that we see and come together to mm -hmm. work together as a team uh, to help an individual. And every agency is really good about doing that. Yeah. It's, in my years working with Hope Outreach, I've always been very pleased with the uh, different nonprofits and other agencies here in town, how, how most of them all work really mm -hmm. well together. So I appreciate yeah. that. Um, on average, how many people do you see a day uh, at the community care ministry? Well, in our community care program, most of our um, work and exchange programs are two hours, mm -hmm. two or three. So you can... I don't like to have more than four working at a time. Mm -hmm. For supervision so, reasons. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and supervision and jobs, too. You know, we have yeah. employees. <laughs> That's true. But we can have anywhere from four 
uh, and, and in the morning mm -hmm. and then four in the afternoon, so that can be eight and sometimes ten. Mm -hmm. We also do community service. People come in right. to do community service, and mm -hmm. so we factor those in as well. Mm -hmm. Court ordered or with their school uh, or an organization right. that might need community service. So right. yeah, we keep track. Very good. Um, what would you want individuals, churches, and anyone else in our community to know about the community care program? Well, you know, uh, Matt, we have a mission statement that includes the phrase empowering people towards responsible living. Mm -hmm. And one of the things Hope Outreach does, and I'm so proud of, the, of us for that reason, I feel like we're unique in the community, is that we don't just offer people a hand out, mm -hmm. but we offer them a hand up. Right. We say, you can come and work for what you need, and that then empowers them and also makes them accountable mm -hmm. for what it providing for their family. So it's a win-win. Mm -hmm. uh, not only that, but once a person has gotten into our community care program, uh, say they're in between jobs and that's why they're needing the extra help, and they've made a really good hand. Mm -hmm. Well, we've encouraged them to put in a job application, and we mm -hmm. actually hire them. Yeah. So they become employees. Mm. That's awesome. That's a, that's a fun thing. A lot of them start out Community working in care. the program, and then they show that they're a good employee, potentially, and then mm -hmm. we hire them. That's great. Um, <clears throat> can you give me some examples of people who've come through the program and uh, that we've been able to help? Well, you know, as, I, as I went through my database in my mind, there is one lady that always stood out, and she was an older lady. Mm -hmm. uh, she had gray hair, and she was in college. Now, her husband's on disability, but she is bound and determined that she's going to have an education and she's going to have a career, not just a job, and she's going to put herself through school mm -hmm. no matter how long it takes to get that <laughs> degree. And in the process, though, um, they have needs. I mean, the gasoline to get back and forth to school mm -hmm. or food might be tight that month, and she will come in and she will work for what she needs and... I would love to see her get on a makeover show <laughs> before she starts her, her job hunting so she can get the clothes and the hair. And uh -huh. So I look forward to walking into some place someday and seeing her behind a desk mm. and knowing that she obtained her goal. That's awesome. Now, we, you were telling me earlier today about a, a lady who's actually working for us right now through the program who went through a stroke situation. Right. Right, and she's there now, and she's been one of our regulars, always a good worker mm -hmm. uh, in our utility assistance program, and she recently did suffer a uh, stroke, which has caused her not to be, a when she looks at things, they're scrambled, <clears throat> mm -hmm. letters and numbers, and, and remembering what to do with her hands and how to do it. And so she said, can I come work for my utility? Well, this is the best possible thing she can do. Mm -hmm. It's something she's done before, It'll help her brain start working again. Mm -hmm. Plus, she's also um, working for the electric bill, mm -hmm. which needs to be paid. And I'm just so proud of her. Yeah. You know, if anybody ever had a, a reason to go looking for somebody to give you something, she has it. But she comes in and says, let me work. I need the brainer size. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and she's Exercise doing it. The brain, yeah. Very good. Well, hey, um, that just goes to prove the point that you know, not everyone who always needs help is just in a poverty situation. It's a, they may find themselves in a difficult spot. Uh, divorce, sickness, job loss, uh, change. Right. Uh, like we say, si sickness or, or health, health right. situation. Right, health issues. That's a big one, uh, especially when you're a two-income family mm -hmm. and one of the main wage earners uh, get sick. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple that come in and work on a regular basis for uh, milk, eggs, and bread, um, she has health issues, mm -hmm. and she has to use a walker. But she will come in, and she will sit, and she will do newspapers for me mm -hmm. on a regular basis and get that milk, eggs, and bread voucher and uh, sometimes some hygiene if I have it on hand. Mm -hmm. Always very glad to be able to do what she needs to do. Mm -hmm. And But you're not your typical needy person, just somebody who suddenly found themselves in a position where they need the extra help. Yeah, that's great. Well, and, you know, we helped quite a few people throughout the year. 
um, being able to provide for their bills and, and provide items for them at times. What enables us to be able to do that? Well, first and foremost, um, we're a nonprofit, mm -hmm. and uh, we're not really dependent on grant money. We are self-deporting through our thrift store. Mm -hmm. So when you donate to Hope Outreach, and when you shop at Hope Outreach, that enables us to be able to do the majority of what we do. And then we have the benevolence of our people who contribute mm -hmm. cash money on a regular basis, and that always helps, mm -hmm. because there are all kinds of needs that go on at, with the community care program and with our homeless ministry. Yeah. So um, if somebody is inclined to uh, donate some items, when and where should they donate them? Well, if it's for the, the day center, mm -hmm. you can bring it right in the front door at 815 West Main. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be glad to take it from there. If you need a donation receipt for it, I can help you with that. Mm -hmm. It is year end. <laughs> so let's get those donations coming in and those tax receipts dated <laughs> <laughs> That's right. before December 31st. <laughs> but if you're making a donation to the thrift store, mm -hmm. you can pull in the alley, pull up to the Sally Port. Somebody will come out and get your donation. Mm -hmm. If you want it to come to the day center, just say take it to the day center and they will bring it to me. Okay, very good. So 215 South Van Buren for the thrift store donation, mm -hmm. the alley there, or 815 Main Street for um, the or, day center. For the day center. Right. right. Very good. Well, you've been with Hope Outreach for a, a long time um, before I got here. Um, can you tell me something again about what would the community want to know? Or what would you want the community to know that they, they may not know about Hope Outreach? Well, you know, I've, I, I, I used to say I'm the oldest employee at Hope Outreach, and then I realized how that sounded. <laughs> so now I simply say I'm the longest employee at Hope Outreach. And the thing that has always impressed me the most about <laughs> our ministry is that we are a work and exchange program. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we're not about let me see what I can do for you, poor person, but rather come on in and let's work together mm -hmm. to get your need met. And so we're a hands-up ministry, and that's unique. Mm -hmm. In fact, more and more ministries are wanting to copy the, the model that we have set and let people work for what they need because when you give someone something, it has less value mm -hmm. to them right. than when you let them earn it. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. so really just providing opportunity. Providing opportunity. Is, is a big thing, which is a big part of what America is about. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, um, one question I wanted to ask you, Sandy, kind of leading into something is, have you heard or have you seen some of these orange drop boxes around town recently? Yes, I have. And that is a subject of much communication in social service circles because we want to know where they're coming from. We're not putting them out. Mm -hmm. And there's none of the social services that we know around town that are doing that either. No, they're not. Um, we've counted probably about 12 of them at the quick shops and some of the different stores around town, and they're asking for you to recycle clothing and shoes in those. Now, for a lot of people who don't know, we talk about our thrift store, um, but we recycle shoes and clothing by taking them in and selling them or recycling them and send them to a recycler. Right. Um, as well as Salvation Army and Park Avenue Thrift. Um, I've gotten together with uh, the representatives from both Salvation Army and Park Avenue Thrift recently. We all got together and understood uh, that there is a concern for our community with these drop boxes that are in town, these burnt orange drop boxes, uh, because they actually say that they're going to benefit MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, which is a good organization. Um, David Hume with Park Avenue Thrift did some research and found out that uh, it's actually a place called American Textile Recycling Services out of Houston, Texas, who's running this, and they, they give a portion back to MAD. But what he found out as well is he called MAD and found that we have no local chapter here, uh, and they could not tell him how they benefit our community. Enid, yeah. in our community in any way by providing job, by providing any kind of service. Their closest chapter is actually in Oklahoma City. And David also found that the, um, all of the organizations on their box have no local representation here. Um, so what we have is a for-profit business uh, under the guise of a non-profit MAD right. uh, collecting donations and, and uh, things that can go to benefit 
our community. Uh, because with Salvation Army, with uh, Park Avenue Thrift, with Hope Outreach, all of the things that we uh, bring in and the donations that come in go back to the community. 100% go back to the community through ministry, through donation, through service. And uh, what we're trying to find here, uh, we've, we've come together as a coalition uh, to want to make sure that the public is aware of what's going on in right. this situation. So please make sure as you, uh, as you see these shop owners who are trying to do a good thing, because I'm sure that these folks have come in saying, well, we're trying to help charity. We're trying to help Mothers Against Drunk Driving. We're trying to help these other folks. Okay. That if you uh, really want to help your community and provide service, provide jobs, which Salvation Army, Park Avenue, and Hope Outreach are able to do through uh, the processing of these and running the thrift store, um, then please make sure that you donate to the local charities. And, okay. and we have other local charities as well uh, that I don't want to eliminate them as, uh, in this either, but as far as uh, the major three, uh, we've come together and, and done a press release, but we want to educate the public of what's going on here. Uh, we're not against anyone else coming in as long as they're helping our community, right. but when it's going outside of our community and these, these resources are right. being taken, especially with the, uh, the guys that they're helping the community, they're really not. Right. So uh, we really appreciate um, our community being able to support and, and also be real, uh, realize what's going on in this situation. We have plenty of worthy resources and need in Enid. Yes, absolutely. And uh, we have a lot, of, a lot of folks who need that, those services. And that's right. And uh, we're very thankful, again, to be uh, blessed by God to be able to be a part of this ministry, uh, be a part of this community. And as always, I just always want to thank the community for your support, um, uh, because without you, we couldn't be here. And if it weren't for the community, we wouldn't be here. That's right. uh, so we, we definitely want to serve but we also need the support, and we appreciate it very much. And uh, just again, want to thank you, Sandy, uh, for coming and, and being a part of the show today and, and, and uh, helping us and representing the community care ministry so well, well and help outreach so well for so many years. And thank you uh, again, Enid, for your support, for, for helping uh, Hope Outreach be Hope Outreach. And uh, we just pray that everybody has a blessed uh, and Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. Uh, so thank you until next month. I'm Matt Lohman with Hope Outreach Ministries, and this is uh, Sandy Hamilton, Community Care Ministries of Hope Outreach. Thank you. Thank you.